This is the demonstration of a well-centered anteroposterior pelvis. This allows measurement of the distance between the sacrum and the symphysis pubis, allowing assessment for rotation as well as the inlet-outlet aspect of the pelvis. Coning down on the right hip in this particular patient who suffers from bilateral Coxa profunda and pincer type femoroacetabular impingement. We can see that the radiograph has been centered with the use of Mohs concentric circles. Identification of the femoral head center has been demarcated. This is drawn as a line connecting the femoral center of rotation hip to hip. A perpendicular is drawn through this point and then a second line is drawn from the center of the head to the rim of the acetabulum. This allows measurement of the center edge angle which in this patient approximates 50 degrees. There are two lines demarcated. A medial line which indicates the wall of the acetabulum which is the posterior acetabular wall and a second line which is the anterior acetabular wall. In this patient a crossover sign is present due to the severe retroversion of the acetabulum. The ilioischial line is identified as is the depth of the acetabular fossa. As the depth of the fossa is touching the ilioischial line this hip is defined as coxa profunda. The ischial spine is also visualized medial to the pectineal line. This also demonstrating findings of coxa profunda. The joint space of the hip is evaluated at three separate points. A medial point, a central point, and a lateral point along the surseal. This should be done with measurements in a radial line for accurate measurement of the acetabular joint space. The posterior aspect of the acetabulum and femur interaction at the hip joint should also be noted in all patients as well as the distance between the center of the femoral head and the ilioischial line compared side to side to look for any signs of central osteoarthritic wear pattern or posterior osteoarthritic wear pattern which is commonly missed with patients being told their hips are normal. An additional finding in the pincer acetabulum and femur impingement case will be scalloping or sclerosis at the symphysis pubis due to excessive innominate bone rotation secondary to loss femoroacetabular rotation. This can also be manifest at the sacroiliac joint in the forms of sacroiliac sclerosis or adjacent segment lumbar spine degenerative disease in a premature pattern. All of these findings can be consistent with pincer type femoroacetabular impingement and identified on a well-centered anteroposterior radiograph taken as demonstrated.